By the way, we we should point out you're a big advocate of transplants, right? Oh, people signing yeah. up donor roll. Hey, we recycle. What you got to do is do your license, right? Drivers. Oh license. yes, but you got to tell the, your loved ones about this because they won't they won't do your transfer a transplant unless they have the permission of the loved ones, the father, the mother, even the husband, if you like, checked off, even if you checked it off. So you got to make make it plain to your loved ones. That do you know uh, you there's a lot of waiting lists? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. there's like 50,000, 60,000 people waiting, like, like 10 people die every day. Do waiting. we know how many people could give and don't? In other words, do we About know... About 280 million people could give if they wanted to. Could give. Yeah. Do we know how many are on the list to give? Do we uh, and I don't know offhand, but uh, it's it's not as many as there's people that need it. That's Sebring, Florida, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Linda and Larry. Hi. Hello. 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 Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> My question is, uh, how are you folks doing? You look so good. You must be doing something right because you're still a uh, handsome-looking couple. Hey, Fine. What's, <laughs> what's the secret here of you? You got a new liver? You don't drink? No, gosh, I don't drink anymore. That's don't sure. smoke, of course. No, the but I got diabetes, smoke. too, because of the medications I take. Mm -hmm. gives me diabetes. So... To beat that, I watch my carbohydrates, a very low carbohydrate diet, and also exercise an hour every day. And I've lost 50 pounds, and um, I feel really, really you, good. You look wonderful. Well, thank yeah, you. you yeah, you do. You really look great. And, and great you, standard. Linda, what do you do to keep so, I mean, we, you don't want to give your age, but... Thank you. I mean, you look... <laughs> I know your age, you. and you look unbelievable. Thank you very much. See, to me, if I were you, <laughs> I would give my age just to impress people. You would? You're unbelievable. 97? No, you don't say you. <laughs> say you're 97 and looking great. <laughs> great moisturizer. Um, thank you. Do you uh, take good care of yourself? I do. Me? I do. I think, it, I think it comes from within as well. I think when you're really happy and love yourself, love Are the you way... Are you married now? No. 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 But I have a great... I have my, my grandson, my... Um, I have a wonderful man in my life. Oh, I'm a do? grandparent, yes. My grandson Ryder is eight years old. I took him to the White House, and uh, he and I hung out, had a great time. So I want to be that kind of a grandmother. And you've been married for how many years? Uh, Forty-six. What's the secret? Two bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. No, you're not kidding. I'm oh, that's what my wife says. In two bathrooms, that makes a good marriage. Less tension. Yeah, but bathrooms cause tension. That's a very good point. Yeah, well, there's always tension when you're when <laughs> you're vying for the seat, for the throne. Yes, of course. Yeah. Did your wife enjoy the character you played? Oh, sure. She enjoyed the money. That was. well, yeah, of course. That's that's secondary. But I mean, you you can't be happy in a part that's no good. You know, you don't like. No, she loved the part. Before uh, Dallas, you were just a, an actress knocking on doors, auditioning, taking what you could? Yes, but I started out as a model and then did commercials, got Any married. a successful model? Yes. Yes, I was. And then I did about 400 commercials. Oh, you did? And got married and had children. Did you do any we know about? Did you do any famous commercials? I, th I think so. I think there were a lot. A lot of them. I did Salem. That's when we, we talked earlier about. You were a Salem smoking. girl? I did Salem. Yes. Oh my God. Yes, when cigarette commercials were on the air. And how did you, know, you get I Dream of Jeannie? I came out, auditioned for it, and did a screen test, and they, they said, okay. I was ready for it, though. Did you think that could work, a genie? Uh, I always thought that show would go. I always, really? But I was very naive about it. You know, I came out from New York, I'd been on the stage, and I'd been doing daytime soap opera for three years, too, so I kind of cut what my show? Uh, the Edge of Night. The Edge of Night. Yes, yes, you probably saw it. My <laughs> mother's favorite, my really? mother's favorite soap. Well, I played Edge, edge of <laughs> Night. A, a, a lieutenant in the uh, in the police force studying to be a lawyer for some reason at night, and it was it was it was wonderful. So I came out here when everything was leaving New York, all the live shows, Alcor Hour and Aluminum Hour, and you know all that. So I came out here to try it and got got Genie. You did the movie Failsafe uh -huh. there somewhere. You were great with the scene with Henry oh, Fonda. Yeah. They did it live on television recently. Yes, so I understand. Wanted you to come back. You didn't want to come back. Well, I'd already done it, you know. I mean, that's, I don't like to go home, you know. Was it fun to do scenes with Fonda? Oh, he was wonderful. He taught me a lot. Not to smoke, for one thing. I started off smoking, and after the first day... I had to smoke like two packs of cigarettes because they'd cut the scene and you have to go back and smoke it again and and oh, it was terrible so I never did that and he would sit like I'm doing now and put his hands like that so he didn't have to match you know you know for cutting purposes so I always sit like this now even when I'm here <laughs> Henry taught you that yeah, yeah. how did you stop smoking ah uh, well I tried everything you know 
But I just finally one day stopped, and it was it was hell. It was the hardest thing ever. Drinking wasn't any problem with me, but smoking was really tough. It's it's probably the worst drug there is, and it kills more people than any other drug too. You smoked too, Linda? Yes, I did. And you stopped one day too? I stopped when I was twenty. I think I smoked for two years, and I stopped because I was doing cigarette commercials, and I felt like I had instant lung cancer. So I said, "That's it, mm -hmm. finished." As we go to break, a seam from I Dream of Jeannie. Oh, Watch. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, girls, why don't you negotiate? I mean, after all, your sisters. What you need is to improve your mind with a few good books. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. California for the Ewings. Hello. 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 Uh, hello, Linda and uh, Larry. Hello. Hi. I just want to tell you, I was your biggest fan for 13 years. Their number one fan. I think I saw every episode. I just Thanks. was reviewing a clip from uh, uh, the 89th season, which I know was Linda's last season. Uh, I recently watched the TNN reruns. I was so disappointed uh, when you actually left the show in 1989. Why did you leave in 89? <laughs> You left, uh, Very it had two more years to go, or? It continued for two years. My contract was up. And? And we felt that Sue Ellen had really come into her own. She was a survivor. She had stopped drinking. She was happily married. She went off to London um, with Ian McShane. Not a bad way to leave. And all was well. So, so they wrote her out by having her just dump J.R. and dump him, split. as she should have. I years hate, ago. Hated it. I got down on my hands and knees and begged her not to go. Oh, he Off did the not. scene? Oh. I did. He did. You could have stayed, right? <laughs> no, I don't think sure so. she could have oh, stayed. I couldn't. If I'd have said she could have stayed, she, she, she could have stayed. He was the boss. Of man, course. Right? He thought. I was. What are you kidding? How did they replace I mean, what did, they, did they have you, did you remarry? Did J.R. remarry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did. Yeah. Pretty little girl, too. <laughs> Uh, not, See? Yeah, right. Uh, but, uh, but you were going to say. No, uh, yes, I was going to say, but I'm not going to say it. Uh, no, of course. You think it was girl. a mistake leaving? And or she not? was about 12 years no, old. No, I left at the right time. It yeah. was a perfect time. Yeah, the ratings were going just down. They rehashed and down. it. But I, you know, it didn't seem right, though. What happens to a show when it starts to go down? Does it affect morale? Not ours. I mean, we, we knew it was going to end sometimes. We were just dragging it out as long as we could, you know. And people are losing ideas, but I, I think the energy was always there. But I think when, when the family starts dissipating, Victoria left, and Patrick yeah. disappeared for a year, and then he came back in the shower. Steve left. And then I left. And so I think when the family, the, the core family, starts sort of dissolving, yeah. then and the mama left. Goes the hokiest was what? Patrick killed and he didn't well, yeah. dream? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was hokey. The, what was happening to Dallas in that, time, in that year? As one of our producers, the one guy who was responsible for the success of the show, Leonard mm -hmm. Katzman, he had left, and Patrick had left, and, and it was becoming kind of a dynasty, glitzy, too glitzy, getting away from Texas, you know. And uh, I, I just couldn't stand it, and I said, well, got to make, mm -hmm. got to get our producer back, and they did finally. Did you ever do uh, feature films? Yes, I've done, I've done a few. Yeah. Yeah. But television but I, was your game. It, it was. It just seemed to be that that's where Would I. Would you come back? Felt, sure, I'd come back. <laughs> Of course I would. You know, in a different, I don't know, I don't, it'd have to be different and uh, something more, you know, very exciting. Speaking of feature films, here's Larry Hagman with John Travolta in Primary Colors. I should never have said yes to Mrs. Harris, but I liked what Harris was doing and I thought I'd give it a week and then it, it just took off and once I did that blood thing, God. Yeah, but that was great politics. Yeah, amazing. But, Jack, I'd like to thank you for coming here. The honorable way you have. I was wrong to stay in. I just hope that when I quit, maybe they won't hit it as hard. And my boys. 
I really don't want them to know about Renzo. But probably the bottom line is, I'm going to be a national joke. You directed an episode of Dow, a few episodes of Dow. Yes, Dallas, I did. Right? Yes. What's it like to direct a play? Different. Much different. No camera angles. No camera angles. No take twos. If you make a mistake, you keep going. And it was the most challenging thing, one of, that I've ever done. And I absolutely adored it. I have these wonderful, wonderful cast. And um, the, the first line of the script, it says the curtains open and there are five sets on stage. So I thought, well, now I, do I either close the script right now and hand it back to Dan Gordon and say thank you? Um, so I thought, well, okay, this is a huge challenge. The stage is about this big, and there's no curtain. So I thought, well, right away in the first two sentences, I'm in trouble. So we started with this great cast, started moving everybody, except him. He just sits and stays. And we, I rather treated it like, like a film. Move. Joseph Fuquay is amazing. Um, in the Christian Slater role. And we just sort of moved Joseph around from set to set. Brought up the lights, uh, moved him to the cell uh, where Ted Neely is, and sort of moved him all around. And it was kind of like he was the Pied Piper and we followed him with lights. It was amazing. What is she like as a director? Oh, she directs everybody else. She just leaves me alone. I sit up there and just say a few words. And, uh, I understand. <laughs> you, you obviously have a lot of lines. Don't you? I don't. No, no. Things like sustained and overruled and things and, like... And he would get them wrong. You know, he'd say overruled when he was supposed to say well, sustained. Well, only twice in oh, five okay. performances. Well, that's, that's not bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't really do that much in the show. I, I'm just there for kind of decoration, and it's fun. No, I do have some laughs. No, a beautiful job. I have some laughs, and, and it's kind of a fun part, uh, but I, I don't really do when that When you're much. acting as a job, and you're sitting there, and let's say there's dialogue between two other people, and oh, you've yeah. got five minutes without anything Oh, yeah, to say, all right. yeah. Are you concentrating on the play, or are you thinking well, you about... Well, uh, you know, I haven't been in it that long. I've only done, like, six performances. So, uh, yeah, I listen each night because everybody's just still discovering things. So, you know, yeah. you, don't, you don't drift off. I'm sure if I did a year or so, I'd be... They'd have to wake me up. Do you like acting better than modeling? Yes. Oh, absolutely. And better than commercials, and that was yes. the best? And acting is for me the best, and I, now I'm loving directing. I mean, I'm just—I love it all right now. I'm having the most. This is the most incredible time of my life. Really, and it, really, it's just fabulous. I've never felt better. Um, you, my life is just uh, in this divine phase that I love. And why do you like acting? I don't know anything else. I, I'm not. I can't do anything else. I don't think. <laughs> I'm not trained for anything except acting. When you were a kid in Texas, it's what you wanted to do? Well, no, I wanted plays. to be a cowboy when I started, but then I found out a cowboy was digging ditches and, and uh, you know, <laughs> and, and bailing hay and stuff like that. So I called my mother and I said, I think I've had enough of this. I think I want to become an actor because I knew they didn't work for a living. They had fun, and I have. It's been a good ride. Oh, boy, the best. I mean, really, it's been so much fun. And both of you are always looking to keep it up, right? I mean, oh, sure. take the right roles, oh, the roles absolutely. come, you want to act. Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I dragged him into things. I dragged him into love letters. He didn't want to do you that. You two did love letters. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then we took Germany, it to Europe. The we took it to Europe here. as well. Beverly Hills. We had the best time. Yeah. It was fun. Oh, yeah. So much fun. That's a good play. Isn't that great? Yeah. Have you ever done it? Well, no. You should no, do it. Should have done it. Why you should do it. That'd be great. Yeah. Come on. We can do it. The wife wouldn't mind. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Shawnee wouldn't. She wouldn't the best part of the show. I mean, she's an old slut, you know. An old drunk slut. Excuse me? Fighting again. There we go. It's his fault. He started it. You started it. Why? See, he said so. Thanks, Linda. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Larry. Larry Hagman and Linda Gray, we hope you enjoyed this hour as much as we did. Stay tuned for CNN Newsstand and that incredible story of the murder in Greenwich. Should he be tried? as a youth or an adult. It happened many years ago. The murder in Greenwich is the topic, and Greta Van Susteren will be there live on CNN Newsstand taking your calls tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow night. For Larry Hagman and Linda Gray, for the um, J.R. Ewings, thanks for joining us, and good night.